Hello everyone, it's Jonathan here, founder of Draven Academy, and in today's video we're going to be talking about which endorsements require fingerprints. So, what is an endorsement first of all? An endorsement means that you're able to drive more vehicles or more types of equipment in the future. So, in order to get an endorsement, there's usually two steps. One, you're going to have to get a permit, and some endorsements you're going to have to take a road test, some endorsements you're going to have to get fingerprints done. Let's explain to you exactly what the process looks like for the two endorsements that you're going to need fingerprints. Technically it's three, but let's kind of walk through it. So the first thing that you're definitely going to need fingerprints for is for transporting hazardous material. So there's an endorsement called hazmat. And when you get a hazmat endorsement, that's going to give you access to drive things that are considered hazardous. So that means anything from gun ammunition to hair, a whole case of hairspray, a whole uh, truckload of hairspray to something that's radioactive, to something that's flammable, to maybe transporting fuel, anything that's considered hazardous, you would need a hazmat endorsement to do so. Now that being said, it could be very dangerous for the outside public, so the country wants to know exactly who you are, and that's why fingerprints are required. Imagine transporting something that's radioactive, and all of a sudden you start going crazy, and you start driving into places that you shouldn't drive into, cause a big accident, and it cause a lot of lives and a lot of damage, so we want to make sure that who's ever transporting those pieces of equipment are safe. Now the other thing is probably the most valuable piece of equipment that you can actually drive or the most valuable cargo I should say that you can drive as a CDL holder which is people or passengers. So in order to get a passenger endorsement or a school bus endorsement whether you're transporting big people or small people you're going to need to get fingerprints done as well. So again they want to make sure they want to check your criminal history they want to make sure that you're safe and sound in order to transport people because at the end of the day that is the most valuable cargo that any CDL holder can actually transport. Now does this mean that if you have any kind of criminal history in the past that you will not get any of these endorsements? No. It all depends on a case by case basis. I'm not an expert in this. I just know that there's been people who have been have had criminal history in the past and have gotten those two endorsements and there's people who have had criminal history that might be a little bit more serious and have not gotten those endorsements itself. However, whether you think it's serious or not, you can always appeal their request. So for instance, say you think that it's been a long time ago, it was a small, small little thing that happened to you, it shouldn't define your whole future. If you go in, get the fingerprints done, they put it on your license and for whatever reason, uh, they deny you, you can always try to appeal it and I've seen more times out of none that the appeal actually gets turned over as long as you provide the proper evidence. So now let's kind of go through the quick steps on wh what are the processes to actually get that endorsement on your license. So when it comes to hazmat, say you already have a CDL license already, what you're going to have to do is pass the written exam itself at DMV, purchase a CDL permit. Once you pass a written test and you show DMV that you've taken the that fingerprints itself and you give them the actual certificate from the fingerprints that showing proof, then they're actually going to put that endorsement on your license. When it comes to getting the passenger endorsement or the school bus endorsement, it's a little more complicated. With this one, you're going to have to pass the written test first, so purchase your CDO permit, pass those written tests if you want to drive normal buses and or school buses, and then you're going to have to get fingerprints done, and then in that same mix you're going to have to take the whole road test again. So the road test itself is going to be split into three different parts and it's two and a half hours long. So that means even if you had your license for 20 years and you know how to drive a tractor trailer, if you want to get that passenger endorsement on your license there's no way around actually taking the road test itself. The road test is going to be split into three different parts like I said. Inspection is the first part, parking is the second, and driving on the road is the third. If you have experience driving a tractor trailer uh, the last two are probably not going to be an issue for you as long as you know what to do with railroad crossings but the pre-trip inspection is going to be tough and that's where we come in. We're the best driving school in the entire country because we know exactly how to get you to pass the test. One of the cool things about us coming or coming to our school is that we actually are third, uh, third party CDL testers as well which means we're the ones who give you the test we're the ones that train you for the test. So if we're training you and giving you the test, don't you think we know exactly how to train you the right way? I think so. So if you are interested, give us a call 908-525-3609 or take a virtual school tour at cdldrivingacademy.com forward slash tour. Again, cdldrivingacademy.com forward slash tour. Thanks and have a fantastic day. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. 
there's endless amounts. Hopefully we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.